2018 was a great season to try out foliar fungicides because let's face it, there are so many diseases out there as you went across the country that it's a great year to evaluate different timings and different products. Well, this year started out cold, then it went to really hot, then it was back cool again, but the one consistent thing we found in much of the country, not, certainly not everywhere, but in much of the country, is it was humid and wet. And we find a lot more disease issues when it is humid and wet. Now with foliar fungicides, they can certainly help with diseases, but they've got to be out in front of it. They work best as preventatives. And I think there's some marketing around the country with different products saying, oh, this one has curative properties. But if you really look at their technical information, maybe a 3% infection, maybe a 5% infection, they can't turn around if you've got, oh no, 50% of my leaves are brown with fungus on them. Uh, no, those leaves are lost. So you've got to get that out of your head right away. You're not really going to cure a whole lot. But if you can get out there in front and time some of these things right, uh, you can stop a lot of disease from forming in your crop. And the best part about this is, is many of the diseases are pretty predictable. They're going to start after the reproductive stages of growth. So if you look at something like sclerotinia white mold, for example, in soybeans and other crops, well, if you can get out in front of that with an application right at R1, you can get you know, a lot of the blooms protected from white mold. The challenge is, well, that disease could keep coming later on in the season, as can many other diseases too. Okay, so our topic here is evaluating foliar fungicides. And the reason why we're talking about this today is hopefully you've got your yield maps from the fall. We really want you to take a look at those. But also, we want you to use a little common sense here. And if you look at your yield map and there's a 10 bushel break or a five bushel break, depending on if it's corn or soybeans or whatever crop it is, okay, that's a lot of dollars for break. You see what I'm getting at here. If I've got a 10 bushel break on corn, even if my corn's only worth $3, that's $30 an acre. $30. Okay, so if I had some investment that only cost me five or maybe 10, I mean, if I can get 30 back on that, that, that's a lot of return. I don't even have to have that much return for what I'm investing. So what I'm trying to say here is, you wanna really narrow those breaks up so you can tell if the foliar fungicide paid or if it didn't. Now, if you've spent a lot of money, like on our farm, for example, we brought a helicopter in, that cost a lot. We spent money on the very best fungicides. We also threw some foliar fertilizer in, some plant growth hormones, all that kind of stuff. And so by the time it was all said and done, we had over $30 an acre invested. All right, well now I gotta have a lot of yield gain in order to make that pay. So in that case, I don't mind having the big breaks uh, on the colors on my yield map. What we did find this year on our farm, typically the foliar fungicides at R1 do not pay on corn for us. This year they absolutely did. We're seeing a lot of 20, 30 bushel gains. So it was absolutely well worth it this year. And the reason why we did so much this year is just the way the weather was. We thought, man, if it's ever going to pay, it's gotta be this year. We were, we're set up for really good yield. There's a lot of moisture. Chances are there's gonna be a lot of disease. Well, you may make the right call in terms of which products to use and how to get them out there and the timing and all that. But if you don't get great coverage, it's gonna be really tough to say, oh, you know what, that foliar fungicide didn't work. Let me give you a couple of examples. First of all, if you've got gray leaf spot, where is that at on your plant? Chances are it's head to toe. Many times it's going to start in the lower part of the plant and move up. Well, if you're only getting coverage on the top couple of leaves on 10 foot tall corn, you're just not gonna get the job done. You've got to get protection at least down to the ear leaf if you want to stop gray leaf spot and keep that photosynthetic engine working for your corn plant longer into the season. So get out, do some evaluations when you're out spraying in big crop, no matter what crop it is, and see how far down through the canopy you're actually pushing it. You may have to use more water, you may have to use more pressure, you may have to get a helicopter like we did to get that push down into the crop to get the job done that you want done. The reason why Darren brings up the coverage issue is if your foliar fungicide didn't work, now we have to ask ourselves why. Did I not have good enough coverage? Did I not use the right product? Did I not have the timing right? 
or was there just flat out not enough disease or enough plant health benefits that I got out of the product that I sprayed? And if that's the case, well, then I want to cut the fungicide. I don't want to spray it in the future under those same conditions. But if it's something we can control, like timing or coverage or a different product, hey, we may want to be doing a bunch of experiments again next year to see if this could be something that pays for us in the long run. Much like how we talk about weeds, there are resistance issues with certain diseases out there as well. So make sure you're using multiple modes of action. Our best luck we've had over the last few years has been using products with two or three modes of action in them and doing combinations of products since many of them have now gone off patent. You can purchase generic versions of certain products, mix them together, and create your own two or three way product to avoid resistance. Once again, we would encourage you evaluate your foliar fungicides here over the next few months when you're taking a look at your yield maps or any other data that you've got off your farm to try to figure out, is this a good investment for me next year or not? One other thing you want to keep an eye out for on your farm is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control it coming up next.